G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. This is not a brewing video as such, but it is a beer related video. Just recently I went back to Ichuka and checked out the Great Aussie Beer Shed and Heritage Farm and uh, pretty much filmed most of it and made a little video out of it. Hope you like it. Neil is the owner and he gave us a bit of a history on the place and a bit of a history of Ichuka and it was just really mesmerizing. It was really, really great. So guys, please enjoy and we'll see you on the other end. Like a drink, you won't get a bad drink on this anyway. Ten for a stubby holder, and the first drinks on the house. Any drink at all. Canadian Club, Jim Beam, Johnny Walker, Bundy Rum, Vodka, Cruiser, Beer, Pear Side, Apple Cider, Glass of Wine, or oh. all, all of the above if you can fit in one stubby holder. Have you got a local drink? Uh, mate, I'll do it, but I've run out. Oh, so, okay. Um, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got one IPA yeah. left from uh, New Zealand. It's beautiful. I'll have that. Try that. Yep. Yep. this many people but we've got a hundred odd people from the Renault car clubs. 47 years of collecting, one man's collection, mine. Really? There's in yeah. excess of 20,000 empty beer cans. <laughs> then everything else here is Aussie. Proud of Aussies, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, there's one big girl here today who wants to be a helper. Up the front. <laughs> and, then I'll, and then you can have your little job later, okay? <laughs> so, you're my official helper, okay? Good girl. That tells you the service motor cars. The newest car in is the E.H. Holden, 1963, 1964. Can you grab this handle from here? Where's mum or daddy? Who's got the phone? Come on, lift your game, get your camera out, son. Turn around and smile for dad. Say, hi, dad. <laughs> hi, mum. <laughs> Can you call a word out for Neil in a big voice? Petrol. I'll give a round of applause. Petrol, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, come with way, honey. that's an early Australian petrol bowers are made by Epex. Burnley Street, Richie, Melbourne, 1910. You pump backwards and forwards, one gallon either side, nozzle in the car, hit the lever, gravity feed, falls out. That was made in Sydney, 1918. That tells you all the countries we sent it to. New Zealand, Great Britain, India, France and South Africa. That was your Bowser, went right around the world. That looks like a Roman chariot, so it's called a chariot. Come over this way, pretty much. This one over here, 1906, the date's on there. 117 years old. It's a luxury item off the farm. Have a guess, what's it used for? Luxury item off the farm. No, wash your clothes. I love when a bloke says that, and I can say, you've got no bloody idea of what you're looks like. That'd be typical for most blokes. <laughs> Good girl, she's an excellent reader, she told me. Can you read the top line? What's that say? <laughs> Give a round of applause, like of Australia! Safety air gas. Don't put one down the lowest, honey. You know, the lowest, Mummy can do it. Light of Australia safety air gas. A gas producing unit. This is before electricity on the farm, gas lighting. They turn gas into a carbide. You throw carbide at the top. Turn the hammer around, you crush it. You pour water in the funnel here, and the gas comes off this line here. More of a quid. Steam engine at the front. Belt driven off the roller. Turn that handle for you, honey. <laughs> round and round the circle. <laughs> Girl. Take a photo, Dad. Lift your game. Get into it. Dad's got a beard. Come on, Mum. That's a close one. No. Hang on. One minute. How about your little sister? She can turn the handle too. Bring her up. Can you turn this one? Can you turn the handle, Vanille? Can you turn the handle? Well done, Vanille. Can you pull out a word for me? That's your first fridge in Australia, Paul Barr. Come on, the old blokes on the back row. Oh, uh, yeah, cool box. Good man. It's the cool guardy safe for the cool box to meet safe. They've had all different names, but they were originally invented in Cool Guardy WA. 
Fill it just with water, wet the Hessian bag, blow it over the side, and the wind blows through. That's at a Flemington race course for 160 years. The Melbourne Cup's been there every year. Around nine years ago, now they built a new grandstand, they put a bolt in. Had no need for that anymore. They heard about my museum, they sold it. That weighs 1.2 tonne, 160 years of Flemington history. Now, for a young mum and my little pretty helpers down here, you're going to play a poker machine! Now, when are you going to be 18 like mummy? She just turned 18, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> do not play poker machines because you'll lose your money. Okay. Dad, you're going to go through up here. Come on, Dad. This one is from the Depression of the 30s. That runs on tokens, not money. That runs on sixpence, that runs on two shillings. Dad first, come and pull the handle down, watch it spin. All the way down, watch it spin. A queen of ten, get out of here, loser! Don't play <laughs> Come on, mummy, a young mum. Pull the handle, honey. Get out of here, loser! <laughs> come on, pretty one. You pull the handle. All the way down, a jack and a king. Winner, winner, winner. You can't, you lose it, little girl. So. Okay. And come on, good turn. Mummy, lift her up. Lift her up so she can see, Mum. Go through it, go forward down. Woo, see here. That's a true winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. Okay, can you call out a word for Neil? Can you say... Go! Give her a round of applause! Yay! There you go. She was standing on my rarest piece in the whole museum. Ooh. That's a strong box from a Cobb and Co coach for the gold. For you folks, later, we do have the Cobb and Co coach. When you walk later on, the last of the Rice My Horse Carriage Museum, nine 100 yard carriages in there. If it's got four wheels on it, you can throw the kids up and take a photo, okay? No worries at all. Two stories now. You can have your photo taken there too. Yes, you can. You can get your photo taken too. Yeah. Okay, who's that silly man? Oh. The wife reckons I'm king of the kids, why? Because I've never grown up for 12 years. The only thing is, I've got to tell you, at my age, some of them in their 20s, I used to take them out and I'd shout dinner. By the time you get them all together, there's 30 people in the group. And uh, about a thousand bucks for tea, but we don't do it all the time, they're down in Tassie. But now I work it out. I buy the tea, they buy their drinks, because these bloody 20 year olds all drink Jim Beams and Jack Daniels and things that cost you a fortune. They cost you more in drinks than bloody tea. So now I tell them, you buy your own drinks, pop shows, shouts to dinner. <laughs> Folks, we're nearly done. You stay there, honey, you're doing a good job. Now stay there, I'll have more jobs for you in a minute. I'm just going to share two beautiful stories here from the First World War, but ask the question first. Do any current serving or retired military personnel? Anyone serve? Still serving? No. Oh. Oh, I'm currently yes, still serving. Oh, good girl. Well done. In the Navy or? Oh, I'm no, in the RAF. The RAF? Well done, honey. Yeah. Okay, is that what you meant? Yep. Oh! oh. Uh, no, we both uh, serve though. Yeah? yeah? How good is that, two youngsters? Give them a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you very much for your service to our country. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. So, I'm going to share some story with you. After that first war, the Great War as they called it, the Australian government brought back 154 cannons and field guns to Australia as a trophy or a memento. They brought them back on the top of the battleships. They took them to the War Memorial where well, they photographed them. Major General Billet produced a book called War Trophies. Tells me they were captured where they went to. That's a field gun. That came to a trooper. The town you all visited today. There's photos, guys, of what the gun should look like in mint condition. So the 50s and 60s photos, past tense. That was the main street of the A big tall statue called a cenotaph, avenue water, palm trees, brass plaque at the base of every tree. One tree per local bloke killed in the war. The gun was there. The bottom photo, same facades of the building. That's your view north of McDonald's today. The entire avenue one is gone. The council. I used to say bad people, but I think I hope it was just a bad decision. They weren't bad people. 1963. So they didn't want to glorify war anymore, they wanted to glorify the main streets. Oh, the shame, respect. The 60s was a hero though, make love, not more hippies and Vietnam. They towed that down the tip and buried it. Ripped out the avenue oh. on the trees down the tip. The brass plaques are sold as names, MIA, misconception gone. And the folklore around here is that not the tip scrap metal got a few pounds for fear. Thank God they saved the statue. Moved into one of the streets 20 years ago now, a local bloke said, find that gun, started digging. Four years of digging, 50,000 bucks later. Wow, good on. Now, we 
That's you and me, my best couple. <laughs> I'm going to share something really special with you now. 60,000 Australian troops did not come home from the first war. 60,000. The government would even send back to the families. They go, from them, from them. How much for your life is it? No. That there's a copy of the form he signed when he listed in 1914. The Australian Imperial Force, that's his handwriting. Lord bless you, what his name? How old was he, pretty one? Good girl, to everyone. 22. 22 years of age. This one, the official title is a dead man's plaque, but it became commonly known as a dead man's penny. Cast into here, we have got a soldier, yes? What's that animal? A tiger. A lion. It looks like a tiger, it's a lion. Good girl, it's a lion. She's lion hearted. His name's engraved here. Lloyd, Leslie, what's his last name? Lot. Lot, good girl. And right on the outside it says he died for freedom mm -hmm. and honour, and they misspelt the honour with a V. Not V for victory, and not V for valour. V because in the first war you fought for king and country. King George V. Oh. the first war. So he was the king, they spelled honour here with a V. Who's heard this before? That's mm -hmm. why country museums like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, stay there, stay there, don't drop. You're doing a fantastic job. Can you ring the bell for now? Can you tell me what I'm going to ring to, pretty one? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go to, pretty one. Oh, another pretty one over here. Another pretty one there. Okay, just hang on, just hang on. There's another pretty one over here. I'm going to say, you got to talk to me. He's trying to hear what you have on your bedside table, right? Yeah, he does. Leave that nothing up and Yeah, that's okay. Well, you have a little bit too much. You have a little bit too much. Did you hear that? You know why I did that? Don't take all your girls and run my bell today. <laughs> Can you read it, honey? What's it say? Olympic, Melbourne, 1956. One lap to go, 56 Melbourne Olympics. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. That, that, you rang the Olympic bell. <laughs> okay. Wow, there you actually And, turn in this direction, guys. <coughs> History on the beer cans, round here. From there to there, that one there, that one there, and all those down there. They're the very first beer cans in the world, 1934. Australia, 22 years behind the rest of the world. South Australia, the first one's 1956. A flat top can, which means there's no wrinkle. Put the old open on the top. But as if we wouldn't know how to get the beers in Aussie. No instructions. How do I open? Pierce here and pierce here. Is this your daddy here? I think it is. So I've got a question for you. Is your daddy clever? Good girl! Hey, give her a round of applause. That's a nice answer. Now guess what, Dad? Yes. When they're this age, I always ask a question, and they always say yes, because they're good. But let me pre-warn you. Because I only did the last tour, and they were about 14 or 15. I think we're teenagers. They turn into smart asses, mate. They go, no, he thinks he is, maybe. Yeah. But let me tell you, let me tell you that when they get to about 20, I've got grandkids in the 20s now, they come around again, they come all right again. They just go through the teenage years and they rebel, mate. But that's life. So you get the last question on the tour. Are you ready for it? Yes. What is man's two favourite things, the average man anywhere in the world? Ooh. Get some beer. Ah! No, she asked him. What'd you say? Get some beer. Well, I like the order of that too, honey, but I think, I think beer and women will do because um, if you were in New Zealand, sex would have been a sheep, honey, okay? They love their sheep. Are any Kiwis here? Ah, right. Yeah. They don't shear their sheep and they don't share them either. They only, and they only kiss the pretty ones. <laughs> in Scotland, they worked it out, put the beautiful girls in the beer cans, you'll sell more beer. Oh, they did it for over 40 years. There's over 200 girls there. On the top left, the six yeah. the name of the girl and the time of to. One says, Pat was lonely, and Vicky was impatient, and Susan shows her leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, for my big helper today, look at that. That's a spring here, rolls up and down your arm, and it's fun. You can have one of them. Oh, and I think you'll really be big enough to do that too. So there you go. Yeah. And for a little bumper over here, we've got a little soft edge book, so you got to learn to read them. So a little present for you too. There you go, you have a little book. Thanks very much. Okay, guys, so car club people, you know where to go, the food's about to get served. For all of you folks, you have got heaps to see. You do this room first. Then you head out, thanks guys, then you head out the door and do the car museum. The car museum's at the far, far end in honour of Dad. My dad was 77 when I owned this museum. Worked with me every weekend till he was 87, and then the last four years of his life was tough. Strokes, cancer, he got everybody uh. there. So, um, but I turned, I built my house on the property. So, 
after he died, I turned his shed into a car museum. It's beautiful. Some of the stories about Dad's life's on the wall. Mm. Now, if you enjoy reading that, when you go halfway down this left side down here, there's two lights lining up some cabinets. The first cabinet's got an old police uniform in it. That was mine. I was a policeman 37 years, but I retired 11 years ago. But my mum passed by 20 years ago. I kept her old stuff, and I put a story about mum. Dad's got a whole shed with bloody big stories about him. Mum's got a little story this big. <laughs> <laughs> on the top section and read, because mum had a tough life. But everyone loves him, Mum. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so have a little read about Mum on the way around too. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for coming. Have a happy Easter. And a high five. You were the best helper I've had all day. You were? Okay. And you were a good helper too. High five. Well done. Okay. Okay, guys, you know what to do. Take your nose, go wander and make yourself at home. So the, you look at the um, star rating for this place and it's just five stars. Hundreds of people, and five stars is never a problem here at all. Jay Furphy and Sons. Oh, so Furphy's a shepherd. Then. Out of Candress. <laughs> How would you like a dress like that? Oh God! When when that was my do to not touch the displays. Yeah, I won't touch it. No way. Dead, yeah, Coca Cola. Oh, jeez, look at all the Coca Cola hands.
They were saying that they dug this up and put it on display. The story was that they buried it. Didn't want anybody, the hippies didn't want the um, war to be known. What are we looking at here? These are all the barrels that farm water cart, Furfy's farm water cart. So it makes you wonder, you know, Furfy started this way as a carting company. Please come inside and capture some. Ooh, look at this. CBA Bank, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. I guess you wouldn't say Commonwealth Bank of Australia Bank. And Sun. Here they come, they're all loud and coming. Here. Give So guys, you enjoyed? I thought it was an exceptional place to visit, probably one of the best brew sheds in Australia. It was absolutely awesome, and I hope you enjoyed a bit of it too. I know I videotaped using a different kind of camera. It was very hard and difficult to film with. I should have done it with my GoPro, uh, but I didn't, but it came out okay anyway. So I hope you liked it. If you did, give me that thumbs up. This is what makes this channel grow. Uh, and please enjoy the next few videos coming up. I do have a brew one coming. Alright guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thank you to my patrons for making all of this possible, and thank you to my YouTube members for also making this exceptionally possible, and all the other patron members that aren't mentioned here, thank you very much guys, we'll see you in the next one.